have okay. children, right? I just had that conversation with my cousin. Yeah. I'm always saying to her, you know, the the people that I love the most on earth are here because someone decided to have a baby. Exactly. So yeah. as much as we, and I, I come from a very big family and we take that for granted because yeah. a lot of, I'm like 50-50 on the next generation. They right. ask me what you drink. Oh, you yeah, this is, my, this is my bubbly. Yeah, this is my, <laughs> Inania, Inania knows what I'm drinking. She called me out on it, right? Drink. But yeah, when I look around, I'm like the most joy I have, the, the people that I trust the most, the people that I have the best memories with are family. And I think I agree with you. And the media is being undersold mm -hmm. or undersold to our specific population. You don't want no family. You don't want no husband. He's going to mm -hmm. drag you down. He's going to do this. And when I look at the people who I know are happiest, it's because they have good families. Their family brings them a lot of joy. Yes. Um, so, okay. So we're seeing there's a trend, though, that people are not getting married. I'm going to uh, hopefully find out why. I guess when we drop the link, others can chime in. Um, but let's start talking about what it is and I that we should be looking for to know mm -hmm. that a man is ready. Let's go there. Because oh. no matter who we are, there comes a point. I'm, I mean, there's shows right now on Netflix. I don't know if y'all watching The Ultimatum or if you're watching Bridgerton even. But a lot of shows center around, you know, the courting and when the courting actually becomes real. So what are some of the signs we need to look for as ladies if we're dating and we want to know if he's really ready for a commitment? Well, I think you you actually hit the nail on the head with the with the word that you said you dropped it and then you switched you switched the term you switched the term tell me which one it's two very separate very separate ideas behind this dating versus courting okay dating versus courting this is a very it's a so i i oh, get yes, a lot I said of trouble. dating and i said courting okay you, you did, so you're right. saying there's I, i'm glad but I was actually going to bring that that distinction up. I'm okay, glad you right said ahead. it because you you led you led right into what I was going to discuss. Okay, so <laughs> dating, I I don't I don't advocate dating at all, mm. right? Because dating, uh, generally the way it's the way culture dis defines dating, and the way you'll get it in most manosphere content creators, you get it in divestors, you get it in pretty much anywhere. Dating is uh, perpetual. You're perpetually dating without really, without really any aim in mind. Courting is different in that you're both, you both have the same aim. You state it up front. Like my 16 year old son now has entered into a courtship relationship with a young lady. He's 16. She's 16. They are, they are courting. Their, their aim is okay. By, by the time we're like 20 years old, we need to be married or we need to like part ways okay there needs to be a time frame courting is also especially specifically if you're a christian courting can be done in the context of a local church where you have other people around you that are helping you older people who are already married who can give you advice courting um is um denotes even in its denotation denotes that there are other people involved dating on the other hand is like you're, you're flying solo generally getting bad advice from people who don't have who don't have anything like they're not married they don't have anything to, they have very little to offer you they're in the same position you're in both dating you know like dating and trying to figure this this thing out but there are people who've gone before us who actually have learned more than we've learned that can give us information and in a courtship situation that can be done right so that i wanted to i wanted to hit on that when you pointed it out i said okay so is the man willing to court you that versus would be a good date you versus let me, date let me pause you real quick yeah. and read some of these comments that's why i was smiling and laughing good evening bernard nice to see you facts on the uncomfortable truth with bernard it's nice to see you needs watches just got a new subscriber yay um let me see thank you thank you uh those who are watching hit the like button if you're watching the replay welcome team replay in the building uh, so, yes, yeah, so they asked him talking about no dating, question mark face. Right. Uh, UFO Kamikaze one says, try marriage once, no intent on going there again anytime soon. Um, Doug says, sounds like semantics, no offense. Okay, your opinion. Thank you, Doug. Uh, and they says, I agree with the distinction. So one doesn't think it's clear. <laughs> Well, in the Nia, in the Nia, I hear it loud and clear. Everything yeah, yeah. ain't for everybody, so we good. Yeah. <laughs> Love it. Um, what's good, Chaos Rain? Nice to see you. 
Uh, Michael Richardson adds, in my days, that's what we did, court, when you seriously wanted to be with someone. So give me some ideas of what the dating would look like versus since it seems like there's very close to some, but others understand the uh, distinction. Yeah. What would be an idea of dating? And then what would be an indication of courting? All right. So one distinction right off the top is that you can date multiple people at the same time, but you cannot court multiple people. You're mm. courting one singular person with the intention upon with the intention being marriage at a certain date. Right. Can I pause right so, there? Yes. Because I feel like from a lady's perspective and I heard I think shout out to Jessica X. I, th I heard Jessica X say this why she. Um, you know, says to guys, don't date one person at a time because that person that you may be courting may not end up being, the, you know, feeling the same way you do and you wasted a year or two years. And I would say maybe that's true for women too. I started thinking about that in terms of, especially if you are an African American woman that was raised in the church between ages of like 30 and 50 right now, you probably have been taught to date one man, one man only, focus your energy on that one man. But oftentimes you have invested 10 or less years, three, four, five years. And what happens when that man is not your husband or, or you know, is not? I, I even met a lady just the other day was at a um, fashion show with um, it was like a, at a salon, kind of like a salon show. And this lady introduced her boyfriend to us. She was a fellow attorney and me and the owner said the same thing. We were like he ain't gonna marry her. And they had been together like two or three years. And in my heart of hearts, I was like, he ain't gonna marry her. My spirit told me that from when I just met them and I felt so bad, but she is quote courting in her mind. But me and old girl could see he's dating. He, he may have you thinking that you are being courted or maybe you have yourself thinking that you're being courted. I don't know. But it, what happens when one person is not on the same accord? It, it's very, it, it hurts to, to, have to acknowledge that but i feel like that's a reality for a lot of people what what say you to how do you set those boundaries and and parameters i guess so here's one thing you can check check that comment that chemo c just left let me see he, he this is something i was actually going to bring up right courting it does involve serious vetting right up front okay there's mm -hmm. no there's no so by the time um you, you're actually discussing this in the context with other people there's no there, like there's no oh we're going out by ourselves late at night to do X. It's we are we are intentional about both of us being married at by this date. Generally, it's like six months to a year. It's not it's not this two and three like if you if somebody hasn't decided that they know you well enough to get married to you by six months a year, bounce. Like, I'm, Some like, people that's, living a lie mm -hmm. or I mean, living an untruth that people yeah, are pushing them you, and. I don't understand 10 year, 10 year yeah. relationships that are not marriages. I don't understand that. And again, not from a place of judgment, but just on a, well, dang, if I'm giving you all of this over 10 years time, why aren't we married? So you're saying a courting relationship is distinct because it, like the conversation up front, as Kimo saying, involves heavily vetting. I already know who you are. And I'm going to say to myself, or we're going to say out loud together, I really think you could be my wife. I really think you could be my husband. Okay, let's proceed accordingly. So that's when you know you're courting. So a whole bunch of y'all. That's it. Right there. A whole bunch of us. A whole bunch of us. <laughs> ain't never been courting. No, I'm just kidding. Have never really been in a courting relationship. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, most people have it because dating has been the accepted, the accepted practice for a few generations now. Yeah. No, like before, before maybe what, 1950, 1940? Probably. There was no even such 70, thing as, probably yeah. up in the 70. They started was, they like Jimmy Dean in the 50s started changing that that smoked a cigarette and looked tough on top of your, your Thunderbird yeah. look. I think American culture really started to change 50s into the 60s. And then it became um, I mean, we always have had pockets yeah. in the 20s, the roaring 20s, and things like right. that. Right. Serial dating, but, mm, right, is what people are calling it. But right? to become like socially acceptable in like movies. Right. Kissing your boyfriend, <laughs> kissing right. someone on TV, like it was huge into the 60s and 70s interesting yeah i so, watch yeah. i yeah, watch no. a lot of those old old television shows and it, it is, was scandalous it, for a woman's like <laughs> like part of her leg to be showing yeah like this is so we've culturally become accustomed to dating very right. good point um andrew adds courting is needed these days yes yeah. you see it's always um, older people that are saying that yeah because they recognize the folly of dating 
Yes. Because I mean, it's no... a waste of time. Yeah, it it's is. Casual I mean... get to know yous and buys. In my opinion, courting requires you already know the person or at least familiar with them. Very good point. Needs watching. Yes, it uh, is. With so many online dating, though, you can't court that way. Then, then shut the apps off. <laughs> Like, it's very simple. Like, as I mean, it's not it's not rocket science. Before before apps and before the internet, people married who were close to the people who were close to them in their town and their cities. We have this idea that this is there's this uh, vast array of people, this smorgasbord of people. I wouldn't be Ocean. able to talk to you if 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 it weren't for the internet. I wouldn't know who you are. Right. I would marry somebody. I would have married somebody in my local. Right where areas. I came from. That's right very where I came from. Yes. And that <laughs> generally that's. But you could get to know that person because you would you could know people who also knew that person. Mm-hmm. Exactly, I, and vetted and knew the families and understood yes. their brought up. See, this is how <laughs> you know people used to almost arrange couples yes. back in the day. They understood their family. They understood you. How much money y'all got? How much your mindsets are similar or not? The families would get along, and here we go. Yeah, we have gone into this vast ocean of <laughs> endless supply of what? people. You so have. It gets- <laughs> crazy yeah go ahead you have people with an endless supply of options but with no self-control that's a part of that's one of the reasons why first thing i teach we're we're teaching at our classical academy the first virtue that we're teaching them is temperance the ability to control your thoughts your words and your actions for god's glory that's how we define it if you can't temper yourself you are at the beck and call the mercy of whatever uh whatever physical desire you yeah whatever forces are acting upon you you like someone says, oh, with, well, with, with so many dating apps, I don't have a dating app. Never had one. Don't plan on ever getting well, one. I... If, if something happens, if something happens to my wife, God forbid, I'm not going on a dating app to find a wife. I'm mm. not going to the internet to find a wife. I'm going to mm. find a wife around here that can help me to continue. To yeah, con- I already told building. her. I said, yeah, like you, yeah. you set a high standard. You set a high standard. To be able to fill them shoes. To fill Michael. them shoes is going to be hard. Yeah, absolutely. But I'm going to have to find somebody local that can do it. <laughs> that's an interesting perspective when i just look at all my family and most of my uh mom's generation married all her cousins are married everybody married still married majority still married um they grew up in a small town in jamaica like everybody married in the same village like we are cousins on both sides for several people because that family down the street like you didn't go past like you know five miles because you didn't have the luxury of flying here, flying there, and any of that. Very interesting concept, the way the world has changed. Michael adds, Suzette, you go out with three different people, get to know them, no sex. Then you pick the best lady that line up um, with what you want in a woman. Hmm. In a woman, then you court that person. Very good. I think sometimes people get carried away in that direction. Um, I like what Michael's saying. I wouldn't. I wouldn't yeah. advocate de- uh, getting to know three women. I would. I would actually like that. That's the. That's like dating towards it. But I guess, you know, it depends because you can get to know women outside of. Um, like I got to know my wife with no romantic intent. We were just salsa dancing. Um, like she was my student, and then she became my dance partner. No romantic intent whatsoever. But I got mm-hmm. to know her. She was over moving a them hips. So I know them hips don't right. lie. I know. Them I mean, hips. well, you know, she. <laughs> She, you know, I mean, yeah. I mean, she's Listen, physically attractive. Like, like, oh, okay, okay. I, I, I am not saying that I that I did not see her as physically attractive. What no, I'm saying course, is, I got to know her. You're a man still, right? At the end I got of the day. to know her. Yeah. Without that being the mindset, because we weren't dating, we were in the context of a bunch of other people, a group of people that knew us. We knew them. And we were just getting to know each other. It was in almost a like good, clean, non-sexual way. Yeah, that's what I think we're getting at here. Yeah, uh, UFO uh, Kamikaze says if a if a guy finds out you're dating multiple men, he instinctively removes you from serious consideration if he's not desperate. Harsh reality. Oh, DL, I missed this. Uh, what time is it? It's soundboard time. <laughs> Let's keep doing you. So I am gonna try. Thank you, Dia. Always showing support. He has a fantastic channel building. Uh, he had a great show. I listened to this show you did with Last Call for Insight.